Welcome back. You are watching Showdown, where I'm joined now live out of Parliament House by Tony Smith, representing the Liberal Party, the member for Casey there. And Ed Husick, always hey, running yeah. late, has just slid in. We're going to try to catch him still putting his mic on. Let me have a look. Oh, he's rubbing his hands up. There we are. There he is. Ed Husick, <laughs> Labor's member for Chifley. Why do I Thanks come for on the show? finally you getting me to there. Come on at the last minute. Oh, look, yeah, we're still trying to get your mic sorted, Ed. You know, the problem is if you get there early enough, you know, you don't fumble around with unimportant things like divisions in the House of Representatives, nothing will be a problem. All right, let me start with you, Tony Smith. Uh, Graincorp, hey, I'm really interested in your views on Graincorp. You've given us a bit of a sense of it previously uh, when you've been here on the program ahead of the vote. Sure. Uh, other Liberals similarly have given us a bit of a sense of it as well. Uh, Joe Hockey had a somewhat different sense of it from what I could gather uh, when he made the yeah. announcement. He isn't concerned about the fact that the ACCC has no concerns about competition. He said that there were some competition concerns. Uh, he isn't concerned about the fact that there's all sorts of elements in place to avoid there being a problem in relation to port access and so on. Uh, he has concerns on that front as well. Now, despite all of that, uh, he has denied Grain Corp being able to be sold to the US company. What's your view as somebody that uh, used to work for Peter Costello, no less? Well, thanks, Peter. Well, I mean, it's no secret. I sat in this chair, I think, three weeks ago, I think the day Parliament resumed, and said on balance I, I was favourable to the transaction. But treasurers have difficult jobs and I think uh, what Joe uh, outlined was that uh, he felt that at this point in time uh, the state of the international market uh, for him was a concern. But now, in your view he's wrong? Uh, look, on balance uh, I was in favour of it. I'm not going to make it a secret of that but let me say this and, and make a couple of observations. He had access to expert advice and all sorts of information, more than I would have. Uh, in the end, it comes down to a, a treasurer making a difficult decision and they make a judgment call. And he's done that. I'm not going to nitpick. It's easy to be hypercritical of treasurers. He identified that international market issue uh, as an important one for him. I think it should be emphasised, he said he didn't think uh, the time was right now. Uh, he didn't say no, not ever. He said no, not now. But Peter, I mean, let me say, I think uh, as we, we're now past that decision, as we look back on it, the one thing I would say is uh, as Joe was making this decision, uh, it wasn't all that helpful to have his senior colleagues uh, giving a commentary. The I National just Party in particular, can... I assume you're talking about there, and getting bullied on Sunday morning television by Warren Trust. Well, look, uh, he made clear he wouldn't be bullied by anybody, and I, I know Joe well, and I know he would have made the decision himself, but I'm talking about impressions, and uh, I'm not being personally critical. I think that if you, if you look back on this, if you've got a seat around the Cabinet table, it's best that you express those views in the Cabinet room. I just think that uh, made a, a difficult situation that little bit more difficult and I think as we go forward in the future it'll be best if the Treasurer was just allowed to make that assessment himself. Uh, sure, uh, commentators and backbenchers will, will make their views known from a constituency point of view but on foreign investment uh, words are, are listened to with bionic ears and uh, I just I make that observation just with, with some candour in a mm. positive light for the future. Ed Husick, uh, what's your view on this? It's all good and well for your shadow treasurer, Chris Bowen, to come out and say that he would have supported it had uh, Joe Hockey actually authorised the sale, but he had the opportunity in government uh, to sell it or to authorise the sale as treasurer, uh, and he squibbed it. Well, I think uh, the treasurer's actually squibbed it. I mean, this was a well, weak decision had, that he, he... This was a weak decision that was put forward uh, by Joe Hockey. It has undermined confidence... Uh, that foreign investors would have uh, in uh, the Australian economy. It's been picked up, for example, in, in the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal that has mentioned um, uh, that this has come as a surprise to them. Uh, it's a decision that wiped 22% uh, off the value of shares for Grain Corp on Friday. Another but I've got to, I've got to interrupt Ed using all of that. I'm as critical of that as anyone. Uh, I, I, I absolutely slammed Joe Hockey in my Saturday column in the Oz, but Everything you say could have also been avoided if Chris Bowen hadn't squibbed it ahead of the election. 
I'm making the point that we are, we're in government now, or sorry, the, the, we have the opposition have now trans, uh, yeah, moved into government. Um, they had to make the decision. Um, you know, we have been critical of them for some time uh, playing games on the whole issue of foreign investment. And when it came to this decision, uh, you knew that Joe Hockey uh, was nervous about it because he had to relate to or, or uh, refer to 130 other uh, foreign investment decisions that he made, small fry. Uh, when it came to the big test on this, um, he, uh, he failed on it and made a weak decision. Now, uh, this is not an issue that's going to go away. I mean, Grain Corp, uh, ADM, uh, will uh, review its position based on what I've read and is likely to come back. Uh, but what it's done in the interim is uh, stopped uh, Grain Corp from being able to get access uh, to funds. Um, they'll probably um, uh, have to shut down facilities in the immediate future, which they're already uh, starting to talk about. They've lost their CEO. And but Ed, uh, using, as a result this of this both decision, sides you can of see politics these, is fault. Labor for not doing it in government, and now Joe Hockey not doing it in government. You're as bad as each other. Well, we're making it that they're in government now, Peter. I mean, you can go back, you can conduct this show through a rear view mirror as much as you want. They're in government. It's up to them to make the decision. Joe Hockey didn't make it. Uh, in terms of the national interest, as Chris Bowen said, he made it in a national's interest. And as a result of the decision that he's made, and as I've referred to a few moments ago, you know, there are a whole stack of consequences that are rolling out as a result of this. And he should have done the, the, the mm. right thing and, and made the decision in the national interest, not in the national's interest. Uh, let me ask you, Tony Smith, where does uh, the new Liberal government draw the line uh, on putting in place policies that are sort of anti-economic liberalism. For example, Qantas, I mean, are, are you open to renationalising that? That seems to be the next cab off the rank. No. Uh, it's fine to have a debate. Uh, there are a number of issues there, Peter, uh, with Qantas. I don't pretend to be an expert on all the aspects of the regulatory framework, but with Qantas having been privatised some 20 years ago, uh, I'm not the least bit interested in taxpayers uh, buying a share back because once you put your toe in the water on that, it'll, it'll never end. Well, let me ask uh, you this then. What about guaranteeing or what about, giving, what about guaranteeing their debt? Uh, that's got to be just as much of a problem, doesn't it, as they funnel uh, this endless amount of money into their uh, Asian expansion for Jetstar. Uh, do you think a government should also be guaranteeing debt when an airline could be going belly up and then the government's up for it. I, I, I just think you've got to be very, very careful with taxpayers' money. And when it comes to a, a private company like this that was government-owned for many years, it's privatised, uh, it's facing some competition. Uh, it didn't have much competition domestically for a, a while after ANSET. But now I'm very, uh, very reticent and uh, I'm not in favour of um, uh, taxpayers buying back a share or, or anything akin to that, as you've suggested. Ed Husick, uh, the flying kangaroo does seem to have broken a leg. What's your view in relation to what, uh, what, what Labor's position will end up being on this? Uh, Joe Hockey's apparently considering all options to some extent here. The Liberals will no doubt, as the government, have a debate internally about what, if anything, they have to do as these pressure points mount. Where does Labor sit on this? It is the national carrier. Well, I uh, actually thought it was uh, interesting last week that in the middle of all the uh, disquiet over the backflip on Gonski that you know, we had Joe Hockey come out and say, well, it's now time to have a debate and a discussion about whether or not uh, we provide further support to the national carrier. Uh, he then opened up the debate and walked <coughs> away from it uh, when, you know, rightly, people were saying, well, does this now mean that the government will uh, potentially... Uh, you know, put in funds uh, to support the carrier or, as you suggested uh, or, or asked a few moments ago, in relation to the guarantee, what would it do in, in respect of that? Now, we've, we've said it's important, uh, uh, you know, the opposition leader, Bill Shorten, has said it's important to uh, ensure that in terms of the SAIL Act that we maintain national ownership of the, the carrier. Um, and, uh, but, but the, you know, overwhelmingly, we need to see if Joe Hoggy's calling for a debate, what are the terms of the debate, what are the terms of the discussion, and why is it that he's opened up the discussion and walked away from it so quickly? All right, we're going to take a break. Stay with us, Ed Husick and Tony Smith. You're watching Showdown. I'll be back with our two parliamentarians in a moment. Experience the quality of Nespresso. 
and you will let no one compromise your pleasure. May I? Please. It's a Baluda. It was. Uh, do you want me to... Oh, so nice of you. Mr... Uh, George. My name is George. Espresso, what else? These are Cole's finest traditional recipe Italian sausages with our special blend of fennel, chili, roasted garlic, and Australian free range pork. Perfect for entertaining. Delicious. This is Jennifer Chen. She's a mum who loves buying toddler's clothes at wootsycutesy.com. Right about now, you're probably thinking, why would Jennifer be buying a quad bike called the Swamp Pig? ANZ's thinking the same thing. That's because we've got ANZ Falcon Fraud Monitoring. It can sense when a purchase doesn't look right, so you're protected. However, wherever you purchase, by credit or debit card, ANZ Card Security. Gavin? Oh. Have you been up all night? I'm looking for hotel deals. 30% discount with breakfast. It's 20% discount with the spa. 40%! Why didn't you just go to Hotels Combined? Hotels Combined! Hotels Combined. Hotels Combined. Compare hundreds of travel sites in seconds at Hotels Combined. Hotels Combined! You'd be crazy not to. Bond Kids. <laughs> Exclusive to Bond stores and bonds.com.au. First time here? Yeah. Normally I use my uh, Espresso app. Ah, um, to be alone. My demon is inside! Oh, man. What makes the Hyundai i30 Australia's best small car is that the stunning design, the outstanding quality, the advanced features, or the fact that the i30 range starts from an incredible 2990 drive away, including six speed automatic. Tell us what you think about the i30, and you could win one. Who offers you all this plus no deposit and nothing to pay until 2015? We do. Hyundai. Welcome back. You're watching Showdown, where I'm talking to. For the Liberal Party member for Casey, Tony Smith, and Labor's Ed Husick, the member for Chifley. Ed Husick, let me start with you. Temporary protection visas, this whole debate uh, in that space. Now, Bob Carr came on Australian Agenda shortly after uh, he was no longer Foreign Minister, and his last words in that interview with me and Paul Kelly were to implore his former colleagues, people like yourself, not to g lurch to the left on asylum seekers policy that would be the biggest mistake that you could do in government now last night in the senate you sided with the greens to block uh, temporary protection visas what on earth are you doing well, i don't think it's an issue of a left or right uh, response to the problem of uh, people smugglers you know putting people's lives at risk in terms of that journey i think the the thing is to <clears throat> ensure that uh, you know we don't have people dying on that uh, two-day trip um, and we've put in place you know, while we were in government, particularly in terms of the PNG uh, refugee resettlement uh, agreement, that, uh, that that acted as a major break on people smugglers. Now, temporary protection visas don't have the, as we've seen in, in times past, do not uh, have the impact that the government believes that they will, uh, and we weren't prepared to support them. We didn't see them as a measure that was, um, uh, you know, follow, worth following through. I don't think even the Houston uh, report necessarily uh, but sung But it was their, their clear policy for years now in opposition and they won the election with a thumping majority. Why, why not just let them have their mandate on it? Well, I mean, because we're going to make a decision that we think is, is right and proper and, uh, you know, we also represent uh, views within the community about uh, the way that this matter should be dealt with. So I think we're uh, also very much listening to, uh, you know, the people that uh, also elected us. Uh, in our respective positions in the parliament. But, uh, but it, it just strikes me as a classic example of you continuing to fight the last election 
ahead of the next election. There's this, there's the carbon tax, uh, even to some extent the debt ceiling debate, although there are some different issues in the mix there, but certainly the carbon tax and temporary protection visas, uh, Labor seems to be fighting the last election, not having gotten the message that the voters so clearly sent it. I think you very much know uh, the sort of detail in all those debates and it's not, it could not be characterised in that way uh, that you just put it. Uh, we can, I'm certainly happy to go through in terms of our position with respect to uh, you know, putting a price on carbon, uh, but uh, you know, in terms of the TPVs, we don't think that they had the same impact or the, or the, the, the type of impact that the government has been arguing. Uh, in terms of the carbon price, they have ripped apart the entire uh, architecture around trying to re reduce emissions and ensure that we get uh, close to meeting our 5% uh, reduction in emissions by 2020 and they are banking or betting entirely on direct action which a lot of you know it's very hard to find economists or scientists that think that this will actually be a policy prescription that will generate benefit or help us uh, be able to get to that 5% emission reduction so you know, it is our job to be able to hold them to account. I mean, that's the position they put extended quite often uh, during the last term of Parliament, and I think that uh, it's right and proper we do the same. All right, let me ask you, Tony Smith, temporary protection mm -hmm. visas, if the pledge uh, that anyone that tries to get here by boat uh, will be shipped to Papua New Guinea and will never get here is mm -hmm. true, and that is something that has been delivered as ironclad by Tony Abbott and Scott Morrison, if that's the case, who needs temporary protection visas? Because no one that comes here by boat is going to get here anyway. No, look, two points. I mean, we we have a suite of measures uh, that are important. We outline... But you don't need it. For the election. No, we, we want to have the full suite of measures. Now, let's just sort of try and get Ed's rationale right here. He would have you believe that if Labor wins an election, they've got a mandate to implement policies that should be respected, and if they lose an election, they've got a mandate uh, to stop policies that we were elected on. I mean, the Australian people are being ignored by Labor. They are ignoring the outcome of the election. Uh, they know it. They'll be judged harshly for it, uh, I think. But on the, on the TPVs, it is one of a, of, a, of a long list, as you outlined, where Labor just will ignore the outcome of the election. It's not good enough. Uh, in their heart of hearts, they know that's the case. When they were in government, they didn't say the opposition had a mandate to stick with policies it was defeated on. Uh, I've spoken before on this program about our approach on work choices, about how, having lost the election, we respected the will of the people. That is what Labor should do. If they had any decency, they'd do that. All right, I've got a shadow parliamentary secretary to the Treasury as well as a former shadow parliamentary secretary to the Treasury. So for the time remaining, the debt ceiling debate. I want to hear both your thoughts on this particular debate. Uh, who's going to crumble? Where are we going to go from here? Ed Husing? We, we uh, said that we were more than happy to support the government in raising the ceiling to uh, $400 billion. The figures on the table as to why they wanted to go to the 500 billion. Bearing in mind, before the election, you know, they said that if debt's a problem, more debt isn't the answer. I mean, that's what Joe Hockey's on the record is saying. Um, now they're uh, they've come back and caught uh, the, the Australian public unawares with, you know, this whole notion that they'll go to uh, half a trillion dollars in terms of a debt ceiling. They not then saying they'll uh, go turn there, to they people the that they say they reasons. then they then turn to people that they called economic fringe dwellers. Uh, in the Greens and are now negotiating to get rid of the ceiling entirely uh, without stepping forward and releasing my EFO in a reasonable time frame, not right, at the, uh, uh, right on Christmas Eve, but being able to give people time to review it and understand it uh, and see what uh, the uh, longer term implications are, they won't do it. They won't, won't stump up with the information. So, you know, it's, uh, it'll be interesting to see if they do uh, run to the embrace of the economic fringe dwellers, as they call them. Uh, in an effort to reduce or get rid of the uh, debt ceiling. Your response to that, Tony well, Smith? Well, I mean, not only does Labor ignore us, they ignore the Treasury Secretary, they ignore the officials that have said uh, we need uh, a debt limit of this sort of amount. You need a buffer uh, of 40 to 60 billion over and above uh, what you otherwise uh, might need on paper. They're ignoring all that. Having run up a huge debt, they are now trying to lecture us and the Australian people uh, on, on the issue of debt limits. I mean, this is a, a limit that's needed. 
but one of the easy uh, solutions, can a, I ask you this, Mr Smith, one of the easy <laughs> solutions would be for you to release my EFO that little bit earlier, only by a couple of weeks than you were otherwise intending to, uh, then Labor could have a look at it and then they say they could make an informed decision which would probably result in them providing approval to the, to the debt ceiling increase to $500 billion. What's wrong with that? Well, Joe Hockey's covered that in the Parliament, but they either won't listen or weren't listening. And that is that he wants the MyEFO to be the most up-to-date it can be to, and to include the, the most up-to-date national accounts figures. Now, Labor has a history of releasing MyEFOs and then it was... Uh, as we know, the figures were, were quickly out of date, and one of the things that they they did was release it prior to national accounts figures coming out. So, I mean, he's made that point, but uh, Labor asks all the questions, and when they get the answers, including from Martin Parkinson, uh, from the experts uh, in the Treasury, uh, or from Joe Hockey in the Parliament on the rationale, they just refuse to budge. Now, Labor uh, just should agree to this limit. There's no point criticising us for talking with the Greens. If they don't want us to talk to the Greens, just agree to the limit. Well, I mean, we'll, have to see what happen, to we'll have to see what happens in that space. We are out of time on this program, but the standoff continues and it may continue into next week. We'll see if the government can get a deal done with the Greens to remove the debt ceiling. We're out of time. Ed Husick representing the Labor Party and Tony Smith, member for Casey for the Liberals. Thanks both of you for your company on this episode of Showdown and thanks very much for watching. We will be back at the same time next week.